to please Allah, a chance to gain reward, I will spend on you, he says, all on who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities, sparkling bright and true, raising you in the sight of Allah and adorning Al Jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward, don't forget the oppressed, and when you go to sleep at night. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulul Kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a sunnatuhu ila yawm al-deen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome again here live from Dubai Another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show A Time to Please Allah As always I'm your host Ismail Bullock And actually today the, my co-host brother Jibreel uh, Gabriel Romani should I say Is not here So today we have a guest slash host slash yeah, multitasker, <laughs> which is brother Ibn Abbas or Abu Khadija yes. Jeffery, as we were just discussing. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, uh, my name is uh, Abu Khadija Jeffrey. So, alhamdulillah, inshallah, I'll be with you today. You'll be, you'll be, fl- you know, you'll be my co-pilot for today, inshallah. Yes, I'll try. I don't know if I can fill in the spot of Jabril, but. Uh, We'll see what I can do. Inshallah. We'll, inshallah. We'll land safely, inshallah. Yes. Now, before, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but you're obviously, from what I know about you, of course, mm-hmm. you're a new Muslim. Yes, a few years. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Yes, so, or, or someone said to me, are you a new Muslim? And I said, well, I'm an old new Muslim. You know? It's been a long <laughs> yes. time now. So, what we like to do on the show, usually, when we have, we have guests like yourself, is to spend the first 10 or 15 minutes getting to know about them, where they're from, and how they accepted Islam. Because a lot of the stories are very interesting. SubhanAllah, each one always has its you know, unique, unique aspect to it, unique mm-hmm. touch. So how about, inshallah, if you just introduce yourself, and you know, we'll, we'll hear about, inshallah, tell us about how you became Muslim, inshallah. inshallah. Alhamdulillah, so I was born and raised in the uh, United States of America, in the Northeast, in uh, Maryland. And originally, I was, my family is from Detroit, Michigan which uh, as usually when people hear the word Detroit in America, they always have a sad face and just a look of depression comes because Detroit is a very, uh, they're having a very hard time economically and they have been for a long time. So my family came from that type of environment. Um, So Alhamdulillah, uh, we grew up in a relatively suburban middle class uh, neighborhood. Um, I went to school, had a normal, uh, normal education, normal, I guess, everyday American life as one would say. Um, and I never really thought about uh, religion. Uh, my family, they were all Christian. And we would go to church every once in a while. And, you know, I, would re- I read the Bible a little bit, you know, once or twice. But we weren't really a church-going family, so to speak. So it never really crossed my mind to think about God or religion or, or these type of deeper questions. Um, all the way up until, I'd say, uh, college. And they usually say college is where you go, you know, find yourself. That's what they say in, in the States. So... It really wasn't until college that I started to um, think about my life and what I want to do, what type of career I want to do, where I want to go with my life. And that was when I started to realize that uh, a lot of my beliefs that I had were not the same beliefs as the Christian faith that I was uh, raised in. And so the more I started to look at myself and the more I started to look at Christianity, I realized that a lot of the beliefs... I didn't share, even though I would call myself Christian and, uh, you know, even though I'd still go to church every once in a while, I started to realize that, you know, I don't really believe in, uh, in a lot of this. I and mean, that's what we see from a, a lot of the stories we hear, exactly the same thing. You know, the person says, you know, I, there was, I just found that it made more sense of there just being one God. I couldn't really feel comfortable with the Trinity yeah. and the whole thing. That's a, a common trend we see, you know, that whole aspect of, you know, okay, we say God is one. Or that we believe only we worship only God, but we're not really doing that. Yeah, yeah. The the hypocrisy really started to turn me off to just religion in general. And um, as I started to go away from Christianity, I started to read up on other religions like Buddhism and uh, Judaism and just anything really that I could get my hands on, and uh, a lot of philosophy. And I still wasn't finding anything 
that was really uh, let's say doing it for me. It was really m meshing with how, what I thought about life and what my beliefs were. Um, so it wasn't until the towards the end of college that uh, I thought to myself that I had, um, you know, I had uh, explored and read everything as far as religion goes. And mashallah, it just happened to be that the only religion that I had yet to study at that time was Islam. And um, you know, I grew up in the Northeast, so we had the, you know, we had the 9-11, and um, that was very, was, that topic was very, you know, famous in, in the area that I lived in. But I, I never really um, paid attention to it, honestly, um, even though it was just right in our backyard, basically in New York, which is two two hour drive away from my home. Um, it never really crossed my mind, that whole, that whole incident. And so when I first started reading about Islam, I thought, oh, well, this is just, you know, terrorism that I saw on TV. And maybe, you know, it's just a waste of time. And uh, some people I knew, they told me, no, you know, if you, read it, if you read about it, you research it on your own, then you'll find the truth of it. And, you know, uh, you'll be able to see it with your, by yourself without looking at the media, without listening to anyone else. So I said, okay. Um, they gave me some, some people I know, they gave me some books. And I started to look online. And it took about... I'd say a week or two of really studying. I mean, every day I would come home from college, um, from my college class, and I would read. I would read about Islam, books, you know, Quran, Tafsir, Hadith, if anything I could get my hands on. And it was like that for five or six days of just, you know, maybe two, three hours of sleep, just reading, 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 just to find out. Because the more I started to read, the more I felt like I needed to read more and I needed to find out more. And it, the puzzles just started to come together. And I was like, oh, this is, I believe this too. I believe that too. And, you know, I thought about this before, but now it makes even more sense um, after reading about Islam and the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So it got to a point after a few days of just this intense researching that I said, you know, I have to accept Islam right now. I can't really, I can't wait. At the time, um, I didn't know any imams. And um, the few Muslims that I did know, they, uh, they, they, they weren't really aware of how much I was really researching. I think they, they looked at it as, oh, he's just, you know, he's just playing with us. You know, he's not really interested in, in this. Um, I, maybe I'm, I'm not getting your story mixed up with no. somebody else's, but <laughs> okay. am I right in recalling that you had a Muslim girlfriend at the time? Yes, yes, I did. Um, and uh, her family was... So she was American or...? Yeah, yeah, she was American. Um, uh, she was like, so her family weren't, they weren't reverts to Islam, they were like... No, her, her family were all born Muslims, actually. Okay. Um, they're from uh, uh, an island, one of many islands that is uh, Muslim, alhamdulillah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were born Muslim, alhamdulillah. Um, uh, may Allah forgive them and guide them. And yeah, they, they encouraged me to a certain extent. But again, they kind of looked at it as... Um, they didn't really take it seriously um, because even uh, back then I was very to myself. I wasn't really, you know, outgoing. So I wouldn't really talk to people that much. So um, most of the research I did was just on my own, just basically in my room by myself. Um, and so when I told them, yeah, you know, I'm reading about Islam, they said, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll keep on reading. It's, you know, a beautiful religion. But they didn't have um, that much information to really give me at, at that time. Um, so I really, I, I feel like I really studied it kind of on my own. Um, and then after I realized that this has to be uh, the way that I go with my life and I, I, have, uh, I have to accept Islam immediately was when they started to um, realize that, oh, okay, this, this guy's really serious. Oh. Alhamdulillah. So then, then you basically became Muslim after that? Yeah, I, I took my Shahada by myself uh, in my room after a few hours of just reading, uh, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was a Sira book. And I just, I said, you know, I'm not, I'm, if, I, if I go to sleep tonight and I die, you know, I might die as a non-Muslim. I said, I, I can't take that risk. So I just said, you know, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Abduhu Rasulullah. And that was the beginning, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, and then you obviously came over after a while you came here in the UAE, yes. where you currently are, you're currently a teacher. Yes, currently an English teacher, alhamdulillah. Um, which is kind of ironic, because I was never really that good at school. Um, but alhamdulillah, I, uh, I went further enough in my studies that I had the qualifications to teach. Um, so alhamdulillah, uh, I got a job here teaching English to elementary school, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So not, not the, uh, the curriculum isn't too intense in the English side. It's not like college uh, or university English, you know, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Now, today's topic, 
we decided to well we've called it the music made me do it and that's actually <laughs> after after a book that's so i actually want to just show to the show to the people here yeah, it's, it's very good it's book. a very i don't know if the camera can focus on that somehow it's a very good book mm -hmm. the music made me do it which is a uh, Obviously, we'll we'll go through some of this, but it's it's an in-depth study of music through Islam and science. Yes. So it's showing you the the Islamic evidence, which many of us probably have already heard mm -hmm. to some extent, and it's talking about even from the non-Muslim scientists and professors yes. what kind of studies uh, that they've um, they've come up with. I mean, it's important, isn't it? Because if if you just think about it, especially in the especially for the youth, well, not I mean generally, but especially for yes. the youth. They're highly affected by the whole music industry. I mean, everywhere. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a person who follows the news regularly, and not necessarily entertainment, but sometimes entertainment can be first-page news. Yes. And uh, not wanting to give her any undeserved attention, but what springs to mind is this whole Miley Cyrus thing. Mm -hmm. Who? I mean, I didn't really know who she was before. Uh, <laughs> only from seeing all these news reports that yeah. are coming out that she apparently she was one of those, you know, kind of sweet american teenagers yeah. i think on disney or something along these lines uh and now she's spiraling out of control <laughs> yeah. in every every angle you can think of whether it's uh dress whether it's vulgar acts yeah. all kinds of things so that's a perfect you know example and many people you know who really idolized her before mm -hmm. may say to themselves well you know what she did it. It can't be that bad. Or yeah. I don't have to be. I don't have to be a you know, uh, a goody two shoes like the, mm -hmm. you know, as I like to say. I can. Yeah. I can go wild and I can, just let yeah. it all go and stuff like that. So, you can see that they have a very big, eff effect on people. I, I mean, yes. even for them as musicians, they seem to be. Um, a lot of them seem to really, lose the plot. I mean. Um, yeah. I mean, just. I mean, so many different. So many different musicians. I mean, I I could think of where, they seem to be. You know. Uh, as we'd it say, they, they've gone bon bonkers, as yeah. we would say. No, re really, yeah. I mean, you'd see them um, a few years ago when they started, and now you see them, you know, when they're like nineteen, twenty, and mm -hmm. crazy tattoos, crazy yeah. haircuts. Every day they're drunk and in mm -hmm. rehab, and coming out of rehab and going back into rehab, and yeah. all kinds of. Uh, all it kinds seems of like horrible lives. I mean, if you look, you think that this person is having some real mental issues. But the, I mean, but but the matter of fact is that you know they have such an influence, mm -hmm. and this music is a real big problem. And yes. I hate to bring this up, but I mean, uh, since we're talking about music, you know, I heard that you, know, that you used to be like a champion, <laughs> champion break dancer. Uh, yes, back uh, back before, uh, mashallah, before I accepted Islam, um, I can relate to the topic because uh, for me at that time, music was my only escape. And so now when I see the youth and I see their addiction, because really that's what it is, it's an addiction. When I see their addiction to music, it doesn't surprise me at all, especially after I've read this book and I've, I've read a lot about the, the topic. Music is, um, it can be very pervasive on a person. And if a person gets to a point to where they're listening to it day in and day out, they really have no idea how much of an effect it really has in their life. And it really impacts their thinking, it impacts their emotions, it impacts even the way they physically feel, it, it, it touches all of that. I mean, the reason I brought that up is because mm -hmm. I wanted the viewers, because, you know, they can see any, uh, a live example of somebody yes. who was, like you said, that was your escape. Yes, and, that was my addiction, one of many. And, you know, not, not only were you just listening to music, you were dancing to it, and yes. you were winning, I believe, competitions. Yes, a few competitions, yes. I mean... Uh, yeah, mashallah, it's ironic that uh, a lot of the, the dancers that I was with at the time weren't that famous in the area that I was in, but uh, now they're actually, many of them are, are world famous, actually, um, after time has passed. So, yeah, it, it, it was something, it was a large part of my life, um, and it was really something that I thought would, I would do forever. I, I really thought to myself that, you know, this is the only thing that makes me happy was listening to music, dancing, and I even wanted to make music myself. I said, you know, well, I love listening to music and I love dancing, so maybe I should just make it. But alhamdulillah, Allah Azawajal guided me to Islam before I went that far. Alhamdulillah. So, I mean, you as a teacher now, you must interact mm -hmm. with, I mean, elementary, so, I mean, what's the highest age that you teach? I teach fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yes. So even fifth grade, I mean, 
what have you seen personally as a teacher and the, and the children you interact with, especially the Muslim children, yes. what have you seen from them and uh, how music has an effect on them? Have you, have you had any live yes. samples that you've seen? A lot. I think um, what people sometimes, especially older Muslims, um, what they sometimes forget is that the, many of the cultural barriers that existed um, maybe in the past are gone, you know, with the global culture, with the internet, with TV, um, anyone in any country could listen to any song from another country, from another artist, even if they're halfway across the planet. And with, the, especially with the internet and with free music downloading, it's, it's everywhere, so to speak. I mean, I, I, when I first came here, I was very surprised because, uh, I thought that, okay, you know, this is in the States, so they'll be, you know, behind on, you know, the latest music and so on and so forth, which I was hoping would be a, a good thing. But I was surprised with the amount of uh, information that my, my students had on artists and musicians um, in the States. I said, how do you know about this guy and about this lady? And you're, you know, you're all the way over here. And they knew biography. They still, they know biographies and, oh, he did this, she did that. And it really made me realize that, you know, there is no cultural barrier anymore. Really, the cultures are just going right into Especially each other. As, as they say, the World Wide Web. Yes. <laughs> yes, it, it's definitely a World Wide Web. And it, it has connected everyone, even if the, the ones who are being connected don't realize it and don't realize the harms that come with it. Now, apart from, you know, which I'm sure we're going to go into more when we touch upon the book, and uh, this is actually what I want to remind the viewers before we go on is please call us inshallah we will be having a break in the next few minutes but after the break we're expecting brother Jibreel brother Gabriel sure. Romani to actually call in he couldn't make it today for some uh, some reason but he's going to be calling in because uh, he wants to discuss this topic I'm sure he can add something into this topic from his own personal experience and on top of that you know he himself one of his bachelors is in psychology oh, so i'm sure that even he which we're going to touch upon more in the book but i'm sure he, even he can you know yes. have some valuable comments uh on that side of things yes. and we'd love you also to try and call in as well the viewers um if brother gabriel does call in after the break then i recommend waiting before you call so you don't get put because he could be speaking for quite some time <laughs> so we'd like to hear from you try and give some messages on facebook as well um i mean even me uh, i've you know subhanallah even though Alhamdulillah I became Muslim when I was very young, when I was 14, one of the last things I gave up was, was the, when I say the last thing, it, was, it only took me like a couple of years, <laughs> but to, fu to fully give it up was the music. Yes. I remember just, even as I became Muslim, because I had, my Muslim friends like, weren't, weren't very practicing, so yes. I'd be the one who'd pray five times a day, so that nobody was telling me this is haram and this is bad mm -hmm. and this is good, or really encouraging yeah. me. They would ask, answer my questions if they could, but there was no like, uh, you know, so it took me a while. And I remember uh, even back then my mother had given me some Christmas money. <laughs> and I remember spending all of it on uh, music CDs. tapes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going into the, into the shop and we talk about the 19... Then I was about 14, so we talk about... Uh, just bit, yeah, about 1991. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I remember going in, and we still had the, you know, those days it was like cassette tapes. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember going into the HMV or whatever it was and buying all of the, uh, spending all my Christmas money on music tapes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really, you know, even a similar situation to me, of course, I was a little bit past the tape stage, the beginning of the CD stage. But, Are um, you calling me old? No, <laughs> not at all. Just that <laughs> tapes was, and I, I like tapes. I would record. Uh, actually, that reminds me of one experience. When I was in uh, elementary school, I, I would record uh, songs on the radio by tape, and I would walk to school, even though my parents didn't know I was walking to school, but I would walk to school every day just so I could listen to the yeah, tape. I would do exactly the same thing. I'd yeah. have the radio on, and I'd wait for a certain song yeah, to come on record. and record yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, mashallah. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember, like, hearing a song and thinking, you know, I have to have this song, even if I don't have the money to go, you know, buy the tape. Subhanallah. So, subhanAllah, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very pervasive, and it's really, like I said, it's really, it just, a, it just becomes a part of the culture, a part of, you know, life, so to speak. 
So, I mean, this book here, the, the, the music made me do it. Uh, obviously, you've read the book. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's special about this? I mean, we often hear, uh, you know, the, the Islamic evidences mm -hmm. on why we should stay away from music and why music's not permitted, etc. Mm -hmm. What's different about this book? What, make, what makes it, you know, what, what, why would you recommend someone to, to, to read this book? Especially those mm -hmm. people, I would imagine there's quite a few people out there who are a bit like, oh, is it really? Haram? Yeah. Come yeah. on. No, definitely. I think this book, it, it, uh, it comes at it from, it comes at the topic from different angles because it assumes that a person wants more than just, like you said, the, uh, the routine uh, ayat or routine hadith that people usually bring up when they're talking about this topic, it talks about studies done by non-Muslims, studies done by scientists, by psychologists, by sociologists, um, and it even you know talks about uh, interviews done with musicians, and it 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 gets that aspect of the of the topic, you know the aspect of the topic or the the viewpoint that's totally outside of of Islam. And it, it helps you look at the topic of music from not just an quote unquote uh, Islamic standpoint, but just from a standpoint of health, uh, mental health, uh, physical health, um, social health. And because of that, I, w I would say that this book is, is a must read for everyone. Even if a person, alhamdulillah, has blessed them, guided them that they have absolutely no inclination to listen to music and they've never listened to music before, I would still recommend that they read this book um, just to realize Alhamdulillah, the, the ni'mah that Allah has blessed them with to uh, not have to worry about this fitna if it's not a fitna for them. SubhanAllah. Well, we're going we're gonna to take a break now, actually. Um, so, inshallah, come back after the break, and we'll be having the live phone call with my usual co-host, Brother Gabriel Rahman, inshallah. Stay tuned. A chance to gain reward I will spend on you, he says. We can't just take knowledge and keep it as information. We have to transfer it into action. When he got up, he said one thing. Did the people pray? In Hajj, for example, the, the, the primary example of how multiculturalism really looks like, all equal. I've got a dentist in Canada. Even though he's ripping holes in my teeth, he's got great akhlaq. I love visiting him. Identify the issue. Analyze it. Challenge it. And then try again. Because if you fail, big deal. Try again and keep trying. I think I lost my ablution, but I'm not sure. Do I have to make wudu again? Is it allowed for Muslims to visit the graveyard or is that shirk? Am I allowed to say Jummah Mubarak to someone? Can I get to know a sister before marriage? I have so many questions and I feel that I've just reached a dead end. If only I could find someone trustworthy to answer my questions. Someone who speaks based on proof from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Time 
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, well, we've had subhanallah a lot of uh, interesting conversation going on before the yes. before the break, and I believe we have Brother Gabriel on the line. Oh, not yet. I jumped the gun. Mashallah. So yes, I think we're going to get him. Inshallah. inshallah, we're in the process of getting him on the line. Inshallah. So um, the book, the Muslim. The music, the Muslim made me do it. <laughs> Inshallah, <laughs> hopefully that's not. A, that's, a, <laughs> that's a whole new story, that yes. one. The Muslim made me do it, sir. The music made me do it. I saw the yes. Muz, and I just, for some reason, the Muslim Inshallah. came in there. Yes. It was America to say the Muslim. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the music made me do it. So, um, you before we went there, you were talking about it tackles it from different angles. Yes. Um, I, I mean, one of the aspects the book talks about is just the science aspect and how music itself isn't just uh, quote-unquote entertainment actually it's uh, it goes it it goes into our ears and our brain and our body reacts to it just the same as we would react to eating food or smelling a flower or um, watching something or touching something the same type of physical responses that we have to uh, the things around us music actually makes us have those same responses in many ways and so the the book talks about how music itself isn't just entertainment even though we might look at it and perceive it to be that way it's actually uh, it's actually like a drug and like any drug it has side effects and these side effects are what are really detrimental to us as Muslims and for anyone that's trying to uh, purify their heart and come close to Allah SubhanAllah. so I th okay, uh -huh. we have Brother Jibril, Brother Gabriel Romani on the line now. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Akhi? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sorry for not being able to be with you guys today, Alhamdulillah. I, I just caught up the, the first uh, 10 15 minutes of the show. It looks amazing, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. We'll, let you, we'll let you off just this once. <laughs> 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 So I believe you had some. Assalamualaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam, How are you? Good to see you, bro. Yes. I wish I could say the same, but you know. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, actually, uh, Subhanallah, I wanted to uh, add two points to to the discussion. Um, so the first one being the amazing, you know transformation that we see around the world when it comes to uh, musicians leaving the industry and becoming uh, a Muslim. And we have the likes of Napoleon, who was rolling with uh, the outlaws, uh, with Tupac and you know, a very famous group. Uh, you have the likes of um, Brother Loon, who was uh, rolling with uh, and singing with Puff Daddy and the Bad Boys. Yeah. And subhanAllah, if, if one person sits down and really deeply thinks about the life of these people, uh, what they left behind. I mean, subhanAllah, we have Loon right now uh, facing the fitna that he's facing, and, you know, he was put in jail. And we have, uh, uh, you know, Napoleon who has lost everything, and other brothers, subhanAllah, who have, um, you know, embraced Islam and come from that background. Uh, people really need to think about, especially the Muslim youth, and also the non-Muslims who are thinking about Islam, maybe. People need to think about how, why would these people leave the, the life of, of comfort, of, you know, selling platinum records, of, um, you know, villas in Florida, Miami, you name it, right? Why would they leave that? What's there for them? I mean, there, ha there must be something important. It's not just like a religion, you know, that someone just picks up and wants to become spiritual all the time, all, all of a sudden, you know? There's got to be something to it. There's got to be, has to be for, for a life-changing situation, for something that, you know, is, makes a difference between heaven and hell for in the hereafter. So people really need to think about this deeply uh, because, and, and really they need to try to understand, to maybe do some research as to why these people left the music industry and left the stress and came into Islam. They gave up everything that people, even Muslims, even youth, 
might see as, you know, like they would wish, they would aspire to be in such positions. And they are ashamed sometimes of Islam. And we find, you know, people like Napoleon, and it's kind of, you know, inspiring youth now to leave that gangster mentality and that, you know, pop star, you know, uh, type of life. So that's one, one very important point that I wanted to, uh, to add to that. And the second one, so if you guys uh, want to add something to my first one, then I'll, I'll continue with that. Yes, even recently I heard, uh, I think I uh, saw it on, uh, I think it was uh, the Dean Show, that Miss Nina, I guess she's a, a musician, famous musician from Malaysia, that uh, she accepted Islam as well. So yes, we hear um, every once in a while, every you know, few months, actually, it's, inshallah, it will become even more of a regular occurrence of many celebrities accepting Islam. So alhamdulillah, I think this is a... Uh, this just shows that Islam isn't for a specific uh, country or a specific race or a specific economic class. That it, the message of Islam transcends uh, any man-made uh, differences that we make between each other. Okay, well. That's true. Yeah, very true. Um, the second point I wanted to uh, to add is uh, the maybe you guys touched upon it i'm not sure so you can stop me if i'm if I'm, I'm actually traveling i'm in the car right now so i didn't see it for, uh, the last few minutes but um, is the the influence that music has on uh, promiscuity sexual misconduct uh, especially within the muslim world right now and i was um a lot of people might not know but some of the work that we do is is uh, dealing with uh, a counter missionary, you know, work and people how the people try to, you know, deviate people from Islam. And one of the, believe it or not, one of the tactics that some of the missionaries uh, use against Muslims in the Muslim countries is music. And I've seen that firsthand experience uh, when I was in Africa. You know, people would meet after after Asr in the park, boys and girls. And they were brought together by missionaries, and they would play music and dance. So music would be something to lure them in, into their activities. And obviously, uh, this so-called interaction in the name of love and in the name of you know, a religion would be brought in, and which would lead to a promiscuity and, and, and sexual misconduct. And if you, if, you ever, if you ever to take a little research and to analyze you know, what's the main topic of music today, it will be this topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and even I think recently uh, there's been a lot more instances where a lot m or many more musicians have been indirectly or directly mentioning Islam or mentioning uh, something about Islam in their music video or in their in their song. And I think as a, as a community, we should be we should realize that there's a reason for this increase. Um, like Jabril was telling us, um, it it isn't because the musicians I think have uh, some deep seated hatred of Islam or deep seated hatred of Muslims, but I think it's really because they feel that this is one <coughs> category, this one audience that we have yet to really get. So if we if we say something you know controversial on our on our song or if we uh, put something controversial in our video, then uh, this audience that we haven't gotten control over will they'll listen to our songs, they'll listen to our video, they'll they'll look at us, they'll give us attention. And I think, I mean, me personally, I've noticed that there seems to be more of these uh, kind of subtle hints toward, about Islam or about Muslims um, or about Allah and in, in music videos and music that I didn't see when when I listened to music. I mean, the first time I heard about Islam was through a friend of mine reading a book. But now it seems like every other week you have a news article about some musician, you know, being in trouble because they said something about Islam or they have this in their music video. And I think that that's uh, a topic that we have to openly discuss. And why is there, why is Islam getting attention from these people in in this way? Right. And, and recently we know this. Uh, I'm not going to mention your name, but mm -hmm. this whole issue with uh, one of the videos that. Uh, mm -hmm. Suppose, well, I actually seen the, the the video, the part of it that shows, but uh, you know the name of Allah being burned. It's yeah. like a keychain. It's like a chain, mm -hmm. and uh, you know specifically they picked the name of Allah, and then basically uh, uh, this thing gets burned, right? So that caused a lot of a lot of issues, and mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, Muslims are very upset. But that's the, the, as you said, the, the question goes: and Why are these people using these, you know, or trying to defame Islam, or trying to even, you know, bring up Islam, or it's, you know, speak about Allah? And um, in quite a lot of the lyrics, I remember, um, even back in the days, uh, in the type, in the time of uh, before Eminem was very popular, at the times of T5. They used to make a lot of references to, to the Quran and, you know, kind of like talk bad about it even. Um, so <laughs> it seems that, as you said, that people are, like they're trying to provoke sometimes or trying to get the attention of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And uh, rightly so, you, you can see that they've, they've succeeded in many, you know, in many uh, instances. Um, but obviously our, our question uh, goes back to, uh, you know, the Muslim youth are still facing this challenge and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they kind of overlook it after one day. It's like they forget about, you know, what happened, the insults and everything. They go right back to listening to the same, you know, uh, thing over again. But what's, what's interesting to note is, I was reading in the news the other day that because I'm, I'm, I think it was a Muslim brother in the UK, he made a petition and everyone signed it around the world. So it, they got like tens and tens of thousands of people that if you go now, I mean, I didn't go and check, but according to the uh, uh, reputable newspaper, uh, I think it was the BBC or something like this, uh, that part of the video now on YouTube has been edited. <laughs> so that apparently... Uh, that's no longer there, the pop, the bit where yeah, the is. pendant of Allah. Did. So, mashallah, because the Muslims made an effort and made yeah. a petition, they ha they had to end up removing that part. Yeah, but which, how is, many, which is good. But I was going to say, how many Muslims, you know, for example, watch the video, you know? That's you a, know. exactly. That's the thing, though. Yeah, and uh, so, the other thing is, how many have stopped watching her songs? You know, yeah. just because you know they're like, okay, we just took that part and we're good to you know to keep watching. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so definitely. I think music, uh, and we were talking earlier about uh, uh, Miley Cyrus or any uh, any of these uh, celebrities. How when they start off, they start off young and quote unquote innocent, and then they, as they go further in their career, they get more promiscuous, uh, wear less clothes, their music becomes more vulgar. And I don't think it's just one person, but I think really it's a model. Um, for for all of the musicians, that the the more fame they get, they have to outdo themselves again and again. They have to push the envelope and, more. And I, I want I want to point out something. I was reading an article today, and maybe some of you might have read the same article. Um, because we need to understand where this music culture comes from, or which mm -hmm. is the, the the most predominant culture that pushes this type of you know of, of mentality and this type of philosophy. And from the same, you know, from the same, uh, uh, from the same background, there's there's a very famous case right now in court uh, of a very famous uh, high-ranked uh, military uh, staff um, who is being charged for sexual misconduct and and uh, a sexual assault and and basically using his power or his position to uh, to force some of his uh, subordinates towards uh, you know um, you know doing sexual things. And the funny thing is that it's from the same place, and people were saying, citing the article, saying that uh, such, mis such misconduct is not um, basically, uh, con uh, you know, conducive of, of, a, of a gentle, and of a person of that stater to, re to represent a soldier, uh, a person of such, actually in the military. Uh, this is something very, very wrong uh, for someone to behave like this, for someone to have an extramarital relationship. And they said that this extramarital relationship would be ground enough for his dismissal, but now he's being sued for almost life in prison. I mean, he might face life in prison uh, for what he's doing. But now let's put you know, two and two together and to understand this. So he's being blamed for something that's being, being fed every day in his culture, in his country. He's being blamed for doing something that people are paying for and, and you know, they're basically encouraging and paying uh, you know, tons of money to go see a concert like that. Maybe he himself, his wife, his and his children are going and watching and buying and purchasing mm -hmm. this type of music. And now he's being blamed for, for acting on it, you know, and people are clapping and crying and, and supporting this type of behavior. But when it comes down to it and someone practices, then they have the audacity to say that, oh, this is, this is uh, contradictory to it, you know, or this is not a gentleman-like and it's not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be, uh, befitting to, a, to an officer <clears throat> like that. Just, just to point that out. Yeah, it definitely seems that uh, there's a there's there's a disconnect between uh, the music 
and and the way people live their lives, or, or at least they think there's a disconnect. But if a person uh, listens to music every day, they listen to, for example, the same song over and over again, as this book talks about, um, it's almost as if the song has a hypnotic effect on them. And due to the repetition of the rhythm of, of the music and the same line, the same chorus going over again and again and again, whether the person listening realizes it, it starts to has a, have a hypnotic effect. Because if you, if you sit down, you know, for example, and someone tells you over and over and over again, uh, this cup of coffee is hot, this cup of coffee is hot. Whether it's hot or cold, you're going to start to think that, you know, I, I better not touch this coffee. And it's the same thing with music. If you're hearing vulgar lyrics over and over and over again, then whether you realize it or not, it's going to have an effect on your thinking. And, of course, if it has an effect on your thinking, it's going to have an effect on your actions. Wow. MashaAllah, it's a very good, great topic. I want to leave you guys, inshallah. Maybe there's other people waiting in, in line to, uh, to talk to you. Uh, MashaAllah, great program. And uh, yeah, great to hear from Ibn Abbas again. Inshallah, yes. I hope to have you on uh, another show soon. InshaAllah, alhamdulillah, inshallah. Barakallah, alaykum. alaykum. So, Brother Ibn Abbas, Yes. Why don't you take us through some important parts of the book because we've got about ten or ten minutes or so left. Okay. So, unless we get any calls, of course, okay. we'd like you to. You know, you mentioned what I'd like to hear is you mentioned some of these uh, because many of us have heard the aspect. I'm sure even on a Huda TV yes. on the permissibility of music, and we've heard mm. the verses of the Quran, which is more than enough, of course. Yes. But you have sometimes people who like say, okay, but you know, is it, stuff Allah Shaitan puts that doubt. Mm -hmm. at, you know, is it really that bad, or does yeah. it really? I mean, okay, I can understand, but it's, surely it's not that bad. Hmm. So you have in this book yes. some academic studies, I believe from yes. the universities like Harvard and Stanford and Yale yes. and what have you, Alhamdulillah. Oxford and Cambridge, mm -hmm. the most reputable Western universities. Yes. That, uh, what do the, these reports say about, about music? Well, Alhamdulillah, uh, the reports are, uh, they vary from many different aspects of music. One aspect, like we just mentioned, is just the 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 effect that the rhythm has on a person and that the studies have found as this book shows that different music has uh, different effects even on our heartbeat so for example smooth jazz or um, any type of jazz jazzy sound it actually matches what our normal heartbeat is when we're not we're not doing any type of activity or just for example sitting down uh, jazz matches this heartbeat so this is why when people listen to jazz, they say, oh, you know, I feel comfortable, you know, I feel relaxed, because actually the rhythm of the actual song is having an effect on their heartbeat. And then they have, uh, when you have songs like heavy metal or, or songs that are very rough and fast, then this, the studies have found that this also, it, it arouses the heartbeat. The person becomes more agitated, they become more excited, even, you know, even if they're not, quote unquote, paying attention to the music. Because the, the rhythm of the song literally has a physical effect on our heartbeat because of its repetition. And so many other studies. One study that I really liked that they talked about was they talked about just even the parts of our brain that are affected by music. And actually the same area that, that is affected by music is the same area that has a large part in the uh, chemicals and the emotions we feel when we do drugs. Audhu Billah or when we are uh, doing zina, audhu billah. The, this same aspect, the same place in our brain is the exact same place that music affects and music uh, impacts. So even, even the way that our brain works, uh, when our brain interacts with music, it doesn't interact with music in a way that is positive, you know. I mean, it, acts, it interacts with, with music in the same way that our body interacts with, with drugs, you know or uh, zina, audhu billah. So this shows us that uh, music, it does impact us, you know, on a physical level. And, and this study, especially this, the, the one done on the areas in the brain that is impacted uh, by music, it was done by a standard professor who, who's not a Muslim, who's probably never read the Quran, doesn't know anything about Islam. But he says, no, the areas of the brain that are affected by music are the exact same areas that are affected by drugs and, and zina, audhu billah, and, and all these other ills. Well, on that point, what we'll do now is we'll just take a, we'll just go for another break. Uh, inshallah, when we come back from the break, we'll read a few more of these uh, studies with, with more of the fine details. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, apparently, we're not going for a break.
<laughs> it's not I'm ready. Doing that. So, going to the book, maybe mm -hmm. if you could uh, pull, out uh, one or two. pull out some of those actual studies, okay. as in the names yes. and uh, what have you. So, just so, so we can, the viewers can get a bit more understanding of the, of the, actual, uh, of the actual study. Uh, where it was done, mm -hmm. the professor that did it, and what exactly you know their conclusions uh, that they came up with, just to give it that sense of. Uh, of course, the, the viewers can uh, can uh, can obviously go and buy the book. It's published by the International Islamic Publishing House (IIPH). I'm mm -hmm. sure it's uh, uh, available around the world. At any good uh, Islamic bookshop, inshallah. Uh, if not, I'm sure they can order it as well. And of course, we'd like to remind you as well to. Give us a call uh, in the last, we have about maybe 15 minutes left or less than that. Give us a call uh, or drop us a message on the on our Facebook page, A Time to Please Allah. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments, inshallah, and your, and your feedback on this topic. And maybe your own personal experiences or, or questions or struggles that you're having w with this topic, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. One uh, thing that they mentioned, it's a study done uh, some time ago, but uh, I'm sure that the results of this study can be replicated today. Uh, they found uh, two, two scientists, Stephen Stack and Jim Glunlock, in 1992. They did a study on the amount of airtime devoted to certain types of music and the amount of suicide um, among the people in these areas. And they actually found out that the greater the amount of airtime devoted to sad music that talked about heartbreak and loss, the greater the rate of suicides in that area. Sure. And this was an amazing study. This was done in 1992, and they, they showed that actually the fact that these sad songs with these, um, these sad themes, they occur so much in these areas, it does have an impact on the people because when a, a person is in the car driving, they might listen to music. And if you're in the car for hours every day and the music, the radio station is playing sad songs, it will, a billah, it could lead to suicide. And another study was done in, uh, was in 2005, and they found out that uh, many people, and I'm sure this happens a lot, we unfortunately we hear this in the masjid, there's been an increase in the amount of musical lyrics and musical songs on cell phones um, to the extent that uh, they said the most popular singer, and this was in 2005, I'm sure it's probably not the case today, but it's the most popular singer that people had on their cell phone was Michael Jackson. And uh, they said that the, the, the rate uh, of downloads uh, of, of this person, Michael Jackson, and his songs onto cell phones was, at some point, it was greater than the rate of downloads um, online. Okay, well, we'll just take a, the breaks ready now. Uh, I jumped the gun earlier. So, inshallah, uh, join us after this break, inshallah. Please Allah, a chance to gain reward, I will spend on you, he says. Ya dhal jalali wal ikram, ya hayu ya qayyum, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimin. اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر try to recap what we do here at Huda TV for the past week and we try to share with you some of the latest news that is happening behind the scenes here at the station. Living Islam.
would love a cooking show to be aired for Arabic dishes. Also more programs for children regarding manners. We want to go ahead and take a look at our YouTube page right now and see how it looks as, as it stands. I'm on the screen right now, but I'm not on TV. I'm actually uh, through YouTube, as you can see right there. It's the same exact thing that you see on TV here live. It's exactly the same thing that is on our YouTube page through our live streaming. A great way to stay in touch with us. My first uh, time to call uh, Huda TV, but uh, I like it uh, too much. Because there is no program in Huda TV that it is not important for our Muslims, inshallah. It's time to please Allah, a chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now, before we continue, uh, we've got a message here from one of our regular viewers, Sister Tahira Khadija. And she says, Alhamdulillah, today's show is awesome. It's as if it's directly talking with me. So that's, mashallah, that's the whole Shana. point. That's why we like to choose these kind of topics that are relevant to so many of us. Uh, the kind of topics that we can all relate to, in, to some extent, we can all benefit from. And we hope, inshallah, in many cases, the topics that we discuss and the points you mention, whatever the topic may be, we try to always pick the relevant to, to, to the, the Muslims' life, that they can help, inshallah, to improve ourselves and our viewers, mashallah. Now, because we have probably about eight or nine minutes left, inshallah, to the end of the show, um, you have some more, I believe, of those yes. reports that you, the statistics and studies that, that have been conducted by the non-Muslims regarding the effects of music. Yes, one study uh, in particular was done by a scientist by the name of Pike, and this was in the Journal of Research in Music and Education. And what he did was he was curious about whether or not music had the same impact on people who don't listen to it normally. So he, what he did was he gathered a number of participants who had no musical training, uh, never made music, and didn't listen to music on a regular basis. And really, music wasn't a part of their lives. And what he did was he got their permission, and he played uh, music for them, basically, to listen to on a regular basis for a few days, for a week. And what his study found was after a week, 96% of the people who uh, took part in the study said that they experienced immense pleasure with listening to music. Is 96% of the people that before weren't normal music listeners said that, okay, now that we listen to music, we really enjoy this, we like it a lot. And he found out that out of that 96%, 83 said that they felt oneness with the music. And 72 felt transient, and 65 had the feeling that they just wanted to move. And this is, this is from a group of people who don't normally listen to music. So this shows us that music isn't just, uh, quote-unquote, its impact isn't just on the youth. It's not just uh, something that the youth do and, oh, it's just, you know, you listen to music when you're young and then you grow out of it. But no matter who the person is, whether they're young or old, music will have an impact on the way they feel and the way they think, as this study shows. And it's, I, I thought it was really amazing that so much of the participants in the study it felt pleasure from music, even though they've, they've never heard it before. And one can say the same for any drug. If you give a drug to anyone, whether they've had the drug before or not, uh, if the drug has side effects, if the drug is meant to make them feel a certain way, then it will have its desired effect. And music is, is just like any other drug in that it does have an effect on people. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And, and one, uh, another study that uh, I think, this study really, when I first read this, I, I didn't believe it, actually. I, um, I, tried to, I, I found it online, you could find an article that uh, talks about this study. But it was a study done by, in the, by uh, a, a guy by the name of Avram Goldstein from Stanford University. And what he did was he noticed um, through looking at the, through studying the, the physical uh, responses that people were having to music, he noticed that music had a it had, an, it had a, an effect in that it, produced, it produces endorphins and other type of chemicals in the brain. And he wanted to study uh, the difference between the pleasure that someone might uh, feel in listening to music and the pleasure they might feel doing any other activities like sports or running or anything like that. 
So what he did, he did was he he did the study. He uh, he had his participants sit down, and he would uh, you know hook up the e ECG and all types of uh, medical uh, monitoring equipment to them and play them just normal songs. And then he would also hook up this equipment and act and have them do everyday things such as uh, you know watch movies. Um, play sports, exercise, uh, smell different fragrances, read books. Um, and what he found out was that the amount of pleasure that the person would feel when they listened to music was higher than the amount of pleasure that they might have felt if they read a book or um, if they watched a movie or even if they exercised. So this shows us that music, it has a real impact on us. It's not something that is just like I said, just entertainment, this, oh, you know, I'll just play this song, you know, to pass the time. But no, really, uh, as these studies show, music, it really has an impact on how we feel. And that is why it becomes an addiction for people is because they start to feel as if, if I don't listen to this song, I'll be depressed. When actually it's the opposite. The song, it might make them feel good for a few minutes, but when the song goes off, they feel depressed again. I was going to ask you, I believe that, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that... Uh that there are studies, there's a study in there that talks about how the music actually can make you become aggressive yes. or, uh, like you mentioned before, suicidal or over-emotional. It's not just a case, like you said, of, because somebody may say, hey, what's the problem, man? Mm -hmm. It's make, you know, you just, you, what you said to me now seems like it's a good thing, you know? <laughs> Gives you so much yeah. pleasure. Makes yes. you feel, you know, everything you, you do in your daily life, if you mm -hmm. did it with music, it's it feels it's so better. much better. Yeah. So someone may look at it from that angle, but you, you mm -hmm. have some other very kind of scary statistics there and studies as well, don't you, on the yes. opposite side of how it can really control your mood swings and I mean yes. I know back in when we were young, mm -hmm. we wanted to have a fight at school or something, we'd listen to some uh, <laughs> maybe if you're into that kind of music yeah. it would be heavy metal, but we would listen to for example some hardcore rap or something yes. to go down and because <laughs> we all know that rap was all about, you know, yes. doing this, this guy and violence, mm -hmm. so you'd pump yourself up. But I mean, what are the, that's just us from mm -hmm. a personal experience, which yeah. many can relate to. But what do the, the studies say about that? Uh, this study, there's many studies that actually talk about that in this book. And one in particular, um, like I said, mentioned suicide and how suicide rates would go up when uh, areas of the country, and this, this study was done in America, um, how suicide rates would go up in areas of the country that had sad music or depressing music. They also found out, and I think this is even more... Uh, shocking and more, um, it should be more taken into consideration from the Ummah, even myself, because I have two daughters. And they found out that the amount of gender roles, or the amount that a person would uh, attribute himself to a certain type of gender role, such as men being angry and women being uh, say, gentle, for example, would increase depending on the music they listen to. And so this one study was done uh, in 2002 the Journal of Youth and Adolescence, and they found out that uh, the s boys especially, and it really girls as well, their they started to have a behavior of sexual degradation the more that they would listen to um, certain music, like uh, this study mentioned, uh, you know, rap music and other music like that, that the more that the girls would listen to uh, these type of music, the more that they would start to have ideas and thoughts of, of sexual degrading behavior. I mean, we've actually pretty much come to the end of the show, but I want to end on this point because uh, that's something I was going to say and you just reminded me, mm -hmm. is that if you look at it now, I mean, I was someone who used to listen to rap music and R&B, yes. but even, you know, back in, we were talking about 20 years back, <laughs> back then, you know, there was degrading, of course, there yes. was sex sexual exploitation mm -hmm. but look at it now I mean uh, you see I mean you don't have to be someone looking for it unfortunately yes. it pops up everywhere on your YouTube uh, yes. you have an Islamic video it's on the right <laughs> but we see how because for all these years yeah. they're talking about women shaking this and shaking yes. that and the you know and rap music has become so popular I remember when I was at school yeah. rap music people used to look at me like oh, are you trying to be which you know, I wasn't, but yeah. I just like the music. Are you trying to be black? But yeah. now, everybody, whether it's yeah, it middle, matter. upper class, mm -hmm. listens to rap music, whether you're yes. white or black. It's very, mm -hmm. it's mainstream. It's the most popular music, the, yes. the rap and the R&B. So, and because those lyrics have become, like you said, every other song is about sexuality of the woman, mm -hmm. shake it this, 
twerking this, yes. twerking that. What we now find on YouTube popping up all over the place. Yes. Girls as young as probably, I don't know how young, I mean, yes. but I'm assuming there's young girls out there, but we see these videos pop up, girl twerking, you know, yes. and this, it's become so mainstream that girls now feel that it's normal for them to turn on a webcam or turn on a cam yes. and yes. shake yes. their backside for the millions of viewers to see because, yes. and this no doubt, it, of course, without, no one can deny it, it comes from the whole uh, music and the culture behind that yes. music is that, hey, you 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 look like this. Shake it for everyone to see. I yes. mean, really. Uh, I mean, we have to end the end the show now because we've uh, come to the end. Jazakallah khair for coming on. Jazakallah khair. And who knows? Maybe in the future we can expand. Uh, I'm going to sneeze now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, live TV there. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Allah. So, inshallah, that's the end of today's show. Before I start sneezing again, <laughs> remember, inshallah, to to leave any comments or any suggestions on our Facebook page, and join us, inshallah, same time. Same place here, live from Dubai on Huda TV, a time to please Allah. And I leave you as always. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's time to please Allah. It's time to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says, all on who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities, sparkling bright and true. Raising you in the sight of Allah and adorning Al Jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward, don't forget the oppressed. And when 